people who get injured a lot on the same side of the body. That's the person who says, Doc, like everything is always on one side. Now that means it's a brain issue if it's all on one. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Perry. I hope you enjoy the next video. I'm going to be talking about the cerebellum, the mini brain, M-I-N-I, that you can see pictured over here. Sits right back in the head here and controls the accuracy, balance, and coordination of movement. There'll be an assessment in here for you to do and how to help you feel a little bit better and maybe a lot a bit better and how you move and with pain. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's head right into it. Hey, everybody, Dr. Perry. Let's talk about the cerebellum, your mini brain, your M-I-N-I -I brain. It's, see it right here up on the screen. And you can see it's towards the back of the head inside the skull. And the brain stem sits in front of that midbrain pons medulla. And if you look at it closely here, and it's just I'm looking at you from the back, this would be the right cerebellum. That's the left cerebellum. And what does it do? Well, it controls accuracy, balance, and coordination of movement. So if you're reaching out for something or taking a step, the cerebellum will feed back into the brain to say how accurate you are, okay? uh, change your balance, and what do you need to do differently with your coordination so you improve at the task and you may not get injured or fall. So you have a left side cerebellum and a right side cerebellum. The left cerebellum will give feedback on the left side of the body, control the left side, and the right side controls the right. So why does it matter? Well, if something is off with the cerebellum, the accuracy, balance, and coordination is off, and what does that mean? you can be more prone to injury, more prone to pain, more prone to tightness or stiffness in the body because you have that poor coordination. And a response for the body is just to tighten and tense everything up because it doesn't really know accurately like how you're moving. So that increases what they call a threat response. What I find is this, People who get injured a lot on the same side of the body. That's the person who says, Doc, like everything is always on one side. Now that means it's a brain issue if it's all on one side. Because normally what happens is the body will try to zigzag compensate. So if you think about it, if you have something with your left foot that hurts, you would now do what? Try to lean a little bit more onto your right side. So it kind of goes like this to compensate and adapt. If it's all on one side, you better be thinking one thing. Up in the brain, a possibility is the cerebellum. Now, one of the things that I do as an assessment when I work with people is a basic test. It's called Rapid Alternating Movement or RAMS. So let's do this together and we can see what happens for you. And then I'll show you how you can work with it. Now you can do this standing or you can do this seated. It's entirely up to you. So let's say I'm going to put my left hand out and you put your right hand on top and you can certainly look at it when you do it. And you'll go from the palm to the back of the hand like this and you'll slowly go faster to see how coordinated you are with it. Okay. So one thing I want you to do is not open and close like a book. The hand has to come all the way off and don't forget to breathe. When that cerebellum functions normally, that should look smooth, efficient, accurate. What can happen a lot of times is if I'm doing the right hand, this is the right side cerebellum, people are going slower or they start to miss where they're like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of going all over the place and the speed changes. So when you start to fall apart, the faster you go, that means right side cerebellum issue. That's a person who may experience more issues on the right, right shoulder, right elbow, right knee, even all the way down the chain. 
And now we'll do the left side cerebellum. So right hand goes out, left hand goes on top, same thing. And notice for you, do you feel any difference? Okay. You'll know right away for yourself and you'll see it in other words that, hey, once I was way smoother, once I was just, it took a lot more mental energy for me to actually do that. And they're exhausted and just stuff goes flying, body parts go flying all over the place. Now, when you do this, people start laughing hysterically because they're like, well, what's going on? <laughs> so the left side with left cerebellum. Now, you can have an issue on both sides or you can have an issue on just one side. Now, this is really important information to know if you have chronic pain, of course, because if your cerebellum is off, then every time you try to move and exercise, stuff can hurt. But I need you to do this if you're an athlete for sure, because maybe you don't have pain, but maybe your, your recovery is slow, you're tired more, you're fatigued more, and you're just not as fast and efficient as you used to be. And if just because you look great doesn't mean that your cerebellum is working great. So if you see that happen and you're an athlete, you need to know about that because that's impacting your performance, I guarantee you. And what I know for sure is that there is an injury headed your way at some point. It's just a matter of when you get it and how bad it's going to be. So now you say, oh, okay, Doc, well, that's awesome. Well, what do I do about it? Well, the cool thing about neurology is the key to neurological rehab is to simply do what you cannot do. The difference is, is that you don't do too much and overstimulate. So it's about a dosage thing. With the cerebellum, this assessment is also how you, quote unquote, correct it. So let me give you an example. Let's say that my right side was the cerebellum side. From here, what I'll do is I'll just do that movement and I will do it slower at the pace of where I can control it. So let's say I go this, this fast and it goes crazy. Then you have to back it off and go slower and get some reps in. And as soon as you start to feel tired or fatigued or then you begin to lose the accuracy, then you stop. So you're slowly grooving that cerebellum by repeating the pattern. And I would do that five to seven times a day, try it for like five to seven days, and then see what happens. And hopefully, by the end of a week, you're beginning to nail that thing. And then stuff feels different on the side you were addressing, one side or both sides. And then you start to feel better. Recovery's better. Pain goes down. Everything starts to go in the right direction. Okay, if you enjoyed the video, please hit a like on that. Also, you can subscribe and check us out on our website, stopchasingpain.com, where we have lots of workshops. We have a membership site. We have a ton of stuff in there that you can use on a daily basis to help yourself heal and go what we call hashtag Beast Mode Monster. Dr. Perry from Stop Chasing Pain. I'll see you on the next video.